This is a takeover. Wall Street and the ASX now at our fingertips with this right here. Welcome to Eagle Review, courtesy of Stake. Download the app or visit hellostake.com and start trading today. Dodgy plane engines aside, the team finally did make its way to Melbourne for the Sunday clash against the fairly informed Tigers, looking for an improved performance, reflecting on the horror that was round seven. Not too much fun that day, going down south of 100 points on the home deck. This time it's at the home of football. Mark it down, the first time the Eagles have been on the G this season. And that means the first time ever for a few of these baby faces. And the boys kick things off pretty well. Good defensive pressure here from Ryan. That sets up Rioli to swoop in for the match opener. Can they win their third opening quarter of the season? Uh, negative. Richmond were pretty good. This guy, he was especially decent. They were just moving the ball so effectively out of the defensive half, particularly from our turnovers. Their kicking uh, was in elite areas, and their pressure was just dialed up to the max. And sure, we were able to nail a few in the first term, Cripper with his absolute soda out the back, but the Tigers were just roaring. They've booted the final four of the opening half to wind up with seven for the quarter. The lead balloons to 39 points just out of half time with an error down back. Castagna nabs this one and finishes with ease. Then the Eagles put together a little run. True just runs through his opponent, picks it up, gives to Kelly, goes past his man, little give to Cripps, slight fumble, doesn't matter. Unbelievable snap goal. Jesus kicked some pearlers in 2022. One of his nine score involvements for the day. The next best was six. We restart back in the middle. Natanui, awesome to Shuey. Great body strength, gets rid of his opponent. True. And then Jones flying through the outside, gives to Kelly from 50. He's automatic from that range. What a finish from Tim Kelly, one of his two on the day. But as dominant as the third term was, with 11 scoring shots to five, the Eagles just couldn't make the most of their chances. And the Tigers just power home in the final term, stretching the margin out to 35 points, and they move back into the top eight. For our boys, it was a solid effort against a pretty quality outfit. The work around the contest and the supply to the forward line certainly pleased the senior coach. Let's have a listen to Simo post game. The game was up for grabs halfway through the third. We probably made 10 changes the last time we played to now, and we've got a lot of senior blokes back in the team. So our expectations are that we've, we've got a bit more maturity. But yeah, to, to come back from that deficit, I didn't think we were miles off it at halftime either. You know, we had a bad period there in the second quarter where they got they got their game going, and when, they, when they're up, they're really hard to stop. But yeah, we found a way probably through the stoppages and contested ball in the third, and we, well, we kicked five goals six in the third quarter. So it could have been a different story, but it wasn't. While Richmond may have ended as the deserved winners, West Coast certainly had their chances. The biggest killer was the inaccuracies. 14-4 to 3-9 from set shots in favour of the home side, while the Tigers also showcased a more superior kicking percentage in the front half, 69 to 56 percent. Richmond were ranked last for opposition scores inside 50 for their first 10 rounds, but the last five weeks they're ranked number three. The Eagles were superb last week with their scoring efficiency and would have continued doing further damage had they brought their kicking boots on the day. This was just the second game of the season where West Coast won the inside 50 count. The previous back in round two against the Roos. And big Tom Lynch, he had a bit of a day out last time these sides met. A whopping seven goals, five at Optus Stadium earlier in the year. There was no Tom Barris that game, and Sunday's clash between the two big fellas was definitely one to watch. He kept the superstar forward to a couple of goals, but some of these one-on-one -on -one contests they are pretty special to watch. Whoa, it's hard to go past Tim Kelly. 40 disposals. The only other time was in a derby last year where he won the Glendenning Allen medal with 40-plus disposals. He also had nine clearances on the day, and his goals, two absolute ripping running shots from about 50 out. Special mentions, Cripper bobbed up for three goals himself. This one in the third quarter, an absolute belter from outside 50. Redo and Shuey chipped in well in the midfield. 50 disposals between the veteran pair. Shuey, 11 clearances, displaying some of his power that he's well renowned for. Hey, hey, remember Ghostbusters? Ooh, I did it. He's a hard guy to forget. Nick Natanui returns. His last game was the victory over the Pies at Marvel Stadium earlier this season. Stadium, he had 19 disposals, 26 hitouts, six clearances, and don't forget about that goal. What a snap on the left foot, right when his team needed it. Eagles won the clearance battle 45 to 31, and he led the way for the mids. 69% playing time on the wide expansions of the MCG. Well, that's pretty pleasing signs for the footy club. Let's hope he has a strong finish to this. My man. 
It's double trouble for the milestone moment. Kick it off with Jack Darling, notching game number 250. So durable. Only once he hasn't played 20 games in one of his 11 seasons. Every chance to play another 100 more. Currently third on the club's all-time goal kickers list. He's 46 away from Summa. An absolute Monty to get there. JK's mountain, on the other hand, well, that's going to be a bit harder to climb. Then there's Zane True, the 15th debutant on the season and the 46th player used this year. Yes, I said it, 46. Unbelievable scenes. He slipped through the national draft in 2020, picked 12 in the rookie, just the two disposals and one volleyball tap in the first half. But geez, he played a pivotal role in the side's third quarter comeback. He capped it off with his first major in Eagles colours. Perhaps we could see more of him in the final stages of 2022. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Elliot Yo just can't take a trick these past few seasons. Finally finding a groove in defence and then the hamstring goes in the third term. Uncanny timing with Dusty being subbed off around the same time for his hamstring awareness. Petrovsky seaton comes in as a substitute and had a bit of an impact in defence. 11 disposals. He showcased his plug-and-play capabilities into any position on the ground. As for the two-time Wusha medalist, we'll await scan results during the week. And hopefully we see him back on the park before the year's... <laughs> Love this one-metre kick from Gibkus, avoiding the hold in the ball. Got to tip your cap there. Reckon Nan Curvis was praying for these types of centre bounces all day long. The shoe finally on the other foot, though. The quarter-time siren costing the Eagles from certain snags this time around. Round the grounds. Petrarca just absolutely smashing into teammate Viney here. Toby Bedford just couldn't capitalise on a great team goal. Sarong gives Brayshaw a bit of a kick up the backside at Optus Stadium. Clark and Butler, one of the more sickening clashes at Marvel Stadium in the fourth quarter. Let's hope the best for Hunter on his recovery. But the winner, Eddie Maguire's trade plan for Jason Horn Francis to the Crows. That'll involve pick four, Tex Walker and Brad Crouch. Might be a bit difficult. Doesn't play for the Crows anymore, but we'll see how it pans out. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Eagle Review, proudly presented by Stake, who have recently launched ASX Investing like no other. Visit hellostake.com or find them in the App Store today. This is a takeover. Wall Street and the ASX now at our fingertips with this right here.